Hi, a Radio Oddity CB500 CB radio. So a viewer called Malcolm sent me this and he purchased it off eBay for spares or repair. And what he said was, there was a ribbon cable that was burnt inside. I'll just bring a photo of the email that he sent me so you can have a look. Which he has replaced, but the radio still doesn't turn on. I mean, it looks in pretty good condition overall. Right, I'll get the box and that out of the way. It's got the microphone part in here as well. So what, we'll get that out as well. And I'll shift this box out of the way. So, I'll put the mic in and I think I'll connect it up to the bench power supply. And we'll see exactly if it's drawn any current or not. I think he said it was drawn about a quarter of an amp or so. So we'll check that out and see what's going on. Right, I'll just connect it up to the bench power supply. One moment, please. Right, I've got it connected up to the bench power supply, which I've got set to 12 volts and current limited to half an amp. So I'll just switch the output on. And it's not drawn any current at the moment. Let's just try switching it on. And it's drawn about 250 milliamps, 230 milliamps or so. So about quarter of an amp. Well, we are getting a crack on the speaker, but nothing on the display. Right, I think we'll take it apart and we'll have a look. I'll just switch the bench power supply off. And it looks like we have eight Phillips head screws on the side, so let's start taking those out. Let's grab a screwdriver. Oh, one side done. And that's the other side done. Right, we've got some sticky pad things here, which we need to remove as well. So that's the back of the PCB. Let's just zoom down a bit on that. Well, I can't see anything obvious on that up to now. And that must be the ribbon cable he was talking about there. Let's flip it over and we'll have a look at the other side. And I'm just going to disconnect this speaker. Well, I can't see anything obvious that looks blown in here up to now. It looks like there's a processor on the display board here and another processor here. I don't know what's under this metal can. Possibly some power supply round about here. And this is probably the RF output section. I would think. It looks like we've got some reverse polarity protection there. I'm not sure what that component is. I've got a crystal there. Possibly some kind of A-prom or something down there. I'm not too sure on that. And a 1517P chip. So I'm not sure what that one is either. I've not come across one of those before. It doesn't look like there's actually a great deal in this. Also, I've got something underneath this metal can here as well. But 
but I would think that's probably going to be to do with the RF side of things and that wouldn't really stop the display from lighting up. Right, what I might do then, I might power it up again with the thermal camera and we'll see what is getting hot. It looks like this cable here probably goes to that microcontroller here and probably to that one here. We're a few capacitors on the back of the board there. And a 10 ohm resistor. Right, well, I'll just zoom out a bit. And I'll just go and grab the thermal camera. Right, back with the thermal camera. Let's just power this up then and we'll see if anything gets hot. Well, nothing at the moment. Let's just switch it on at the front. And there is something getting hot there. And there. Yeah, that's definitely getting hot, whatever that is. Yeah, it's about 100 degrees, that. I'll just try to see if I can find something to point with. So it looks like a voltage regulator or something. Well, it doesn't look too good. I'll just switch the thermal camera off. This is the KTIW02 Pro, by the way which now does video recording and an upscaled picture. Like the other one, it also does mixed mode infrared. You've got two cameras on this, so you can do picture and picture, or you can actually overlay. But the only problem with the overlay on close-up work is because of the position of the two cameras, they don't quite overlay, so you've got to be about a metre or so before that feature actually works correctly. A half a metre. And if you want one, there's some links in the video description with some discount as well for viewers. Let's switch the bench power supply off. Let's get the test meter out. And we'll just go on to resistance. And I'll just zoom down a little bit more so you can get the meter in shot as well. So let's go on the ground, let's just see. Well, we've got 1.6 ohms on that pin. An ohm to that pin. And that one looks okay. So I think the pin out of these is, this is the input pin, so that'll probably be the 12 volts or whatever coming in from the supply, which is over here. Then this pin in the centre is ground, and this pin here is the output. So if I measure between ground and the output here, it looks like we have a short of about 1.5 ohms. Now that doesn't look so good. So, let's disconnect this ribbon cable. And then at least we've now isolated the fault, because it could be one of these capacitors shorted on the front panel or something. So what we've now done is we've now isolated, tell you what, we'll unplug that connector as well. So this front panel is now disconnected, so now we should be able to isolate whether the fault is on this board or on the front panel. So let's just measure across there again. And we've still got one and a half ohms. Now it could be the voltage regulator itself that's failed, or it could be something else that the voltage regulator supplies. It could be a, one of these little tiny capacitors which quite often fail. It could be something like the microcontroller. But we'll hope it's not, because if it is, it's, well, this is probably not going to be repairable. Because even if we've got a replacement microcontroller, this is what holds the firmware or the actual program to make the radio work. So if that's gone, then even if we've got a new 
microcontroller, it wouldn't actually do anything because it wouldn't have a program to run in it. And the likelihood is you'll not be able to download the program unless there's some kind of firmware update for this. I'll have to have a look on the internet, which I doubt there will be. Or if you could read it out from another unit. Now the problem with that is, I mean that's probably the program and header there for it. The problem with that is, is that most of these microcontrollers now have got what's called read protection on them. So it's to stop other companies from reading out their program and then copying it into a different unit. So I think the first thing I'm going to do, I might get this under the microscope and we'll remove this voltage regulator. And then what I might do, if the short is still there, we'll try in injecting some voltage on the ground and the output pin here and we'll see what actually gets hot. So I'll go and get the microscope set up. And I'll get some low melt solder on this and we'll take this off. So the microscope that I'm using is the Tomlov 4K AF Max. And I've just upgraded this so it records sound. But also I had a bit mess around with the firmware. And it now does that as well too. <laughs> so I've got my own personalised microscope now which I thought was quite cool. So that's the voltage regulator there. I'll just turn the board around a little bit so it's easier for me to work on. I'll just focus it back in. I'm just going to put a little bit of flux on it first. Just get the iron out and then we'll get some low melt solder on it. And the reason I'm using a low melt solder is because there's two capacitors right next to it there. I could take them off, but if I was to use hot air then they might explode. But it shouldn't take long like that just to get it off with a bit low melt. I should just be to pick that off with the tweezers now, hopefully. And there we go, easy as that. That's why I love low melt solder, it's great if you've not used it before. I'll tell you what, we can try. I'll just move this out of the way a second. Let's just measure the resistance between these two pins here. So as you can see, we don't have a short on the voltage regulator across those two pins, and we were previously. So that means the short must be elsewhere on the board. Let's just double check that. So if I go from there to there. Yeah, we've still got 1.4 ohms. So what I'll do, I'll connect a wire from here and here up to the bench power supply and we'll try injecting some voltage and then we'll monitor what gets hot with a the thermal camera. I'm just going to clean this off just to get rid of the low melt solder. Like so. Just put a little bit of normal solder on those two pads because we need the ground pad here. And that's a lot of voltage that we're going to inject into. I think that'll do for that. Right, so I'm going to start off by injecting one volt at one amp. So let's switch on the bench power supply. And it looks like it could be the microcontroller. Let's just double check. Yeah. Well, that's a shame. I had a feeling it might have been the microcontroller, judging by the damage on the cable. So it looks like something's shorted out and maybe sent 12 volts down these lines into the microcontroller. So unfortunately this one's not going to be repairable. Yeah, that's the only thing that looks like it's getting hot on the board. The microcontroller. So unfortunately this is going to be a no fix. 
because like I said previously, even if we get a replacement microcontroller, we won't have the firmware to program it. So what can you do? So the chip is the HC32L. I think that's either 130 or 160G8, which is a microcontroller. So I'll tell you what, just to rule it out, which it is the microcontroller, but I know people will be saying, well, could it not be a capacitor around it? Let's take the chip off and we'll see if the short disappears. Let's just put some flux on it. And then I'll probably just use some low melt solder on this, I think. Right, I still might have to hit that with a little bit hot air just to try and heat it all up evenly. Just clean these pads off a bit. Right, let's just see. Let's get the regulator in shot. Let's raise the microscope slightly so I get more stuff in shot there. Let's just see if we have a shot there now or not. And we don't. There you go, we've got about 2k there now. Yeah, about 2.2k. So, definitely shorted microcontroller. So I thought I'd just plug it into the bench power supply without the chip in place. We'll just see if we get 5 volts on this voltage regulator now. So we'll just go to the ground there and... Yeah, 4.99. 4.99 so the regulator is working so definitely that chip and the annoying thing is I can get that chip off eBay for about two pound but without the program to go into the chip the radio won't work and we can't get the program because it's the manufacturer's own code and they won't supply that so unfortunately ain't no fix on this one such a shame but that's the way it goes sometimes. Right then, if you enjoyed this video, please give it the thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, please subscribe. Any comments or questions, leave it in the comment section below. And as always, have a great day. Thanks for watching.